But you look at animals, and in all sorts of realms, it's not just rock, paper, scissors, stalemates they're reaching. They actually cooperate with each other. And you look close enough, and you see they're not relatives. They're not relatives, yet you get all sorts of altruistic behavior, and you've got it under a whole bunch of domains. Because this brings up the question, why should you ever be cooperative with another individual if you're a social animal? At every possibility, you should stab him in the back and be selfish. And the reason why that isn't a good idea is there's all sorts of circumstances where many hands make the task light or whatever that is. Cooperation can have synergistic benefits. And you see that with species that are cooperative hunters where they are not necessarily relatives. They will chase one, chasing an animal, while the other is getting ready to cut a corner on it. Cooperative behavior, and they increase the likelihood of them getting a kill. Another example of this, research by a guy named Mark Hauser at Harvard looking at rhesus monkeys. And what he showed was he would put these monkeys in a situation where they had access to food. They had access to food under one circumstance where they could reach for it and take it in and share it with another monkey. Under the other circumstance, it required two monkeys to get the food in there. And what he showed was clear-cut reciprocity. Monkeys who were sharing with this guy were more likely to get shared back with and got more cooperation when it was a task where two of them had to work together to get the food. One alone wasn't enough. Many hands make the task lighter. Under all sorts of circumstances, cooperation has a strong evolutionary payoff, even among non-relatives, with a condition which is you're not putting more into it than you are getting. That is reciprocal. And this opens up the third building block of all of this, which is reciprocal altruism. Cooperation, altruistic behavior among non-relatives, but undergoing very strict sort of constraints of it's got to be reciprocated with all sorts of rules like that. So what does that look like? So you're going to see reciprocal altruism. When would you see that? What's the immediate thing? What sort of species would show systems of reciprocal cooperation among non-relatives? They got to be smart animals. They got to be social. They got to be smart. Why do they have to be smart? Because they have to remember, this is the guy who like owes me a favor from last Thursday. They need to be able to recognize individuals. They have to be long lived enough so that there's a chance of interacting with that individual again and establishing this reciprocity. You would thus predict you would see systems of reciprocal altruism only in long lived social vertebrates. But you see the exact sorts of things in bacteria. You see the exact sort of things in fungi. You see that in all sorts of other realms. You get social bacteria, colonizing bacteria, and where what you might get are two clonal lines that are together. In other words, two genetically two lines, each of which is all the bacteria have the same genetic makeup. So think of it as one individual who's just kind of dispersed, another one who's just kind of dispersed. And they've come together in something called a fruiting body, which is how bacteria reproduce or whatever. And there's two parts to a fruiting body. There's one which is the stalk, which attaches to something or other. And then there's the part that actually fruits. So you want to be in the fruiting part, because that's the part that actually reproduces. And the stalk is doing all the work there. And what you see is attempts at cheating. Attempts at one of these strains trying to disproportionately wind up in the fruiting part. And what you also see is the next time around, this other strain will not cooperate with it, will not form a social colony. So that's getting played off at the level of single cell organisms forming big social colonies, getting played at that level. Yes, as we will see, reciprocal altruism works most readily in big, smart, long-lived social beasts, but it can occur in all sorts of systems. So what it's built around is reciprocal cooperation. And intrinsic in that is another motivation going on there, not just to involve a reciprocal relationship with a non-relative and many hands and light tasks and all of that, but also, whenever possible, to cheat to take advantage of the other individual. 
And thus, another key facet of it is to be very good at detecting when somebody is cheating against you. To be vigilant about cheating in what would otherwise be a stable reciprocal relationship. And an awful lot of social behavior is built around animals either trying to get away with something or spotting somebody else doing the same. 